This is part one of a four-part series on the demand curve, and the first part is going to be about the marginal value, total value, and consumer surplus. And we think of a demand curve, what we can do is we can look at the demand in three different ways. We can look at it mathematically as a formula. The quantity demand is equal to 10 minus P. We can look at it verbally as a schedule of quantities that people are willing to buy at different prices. So in this case here at $10, nobody wants any. At $9, one unit will be sold. At $8, two units will be sold. $7, three units on down the line until at zero, there will be 10 units sold. And we can also do this graphically. We'll start with quantity on our x-axis and price on our y-axis. And then we can look at different points. So at a price of zero, people want 10. At a price of 10, people want zero. And then we look at different points. At a price of three, seven units will be consumed. At a price of eight, two units will be consumed and then I won't draw the lines in but at five five units will be sold and from here we can now draw a line through all these points and this is our demand curve the demand curve simply represents the schedule of how much people are willing to buy at different prices so again we look at it mathematically with a formula we look at it verbally with the schedule of what people are willing to how much people are willing to buy at different prices and we look at graphically look at it graphically with this demand curve now when we look at a demand curve and the values that we see here what we're really doing and what's determining these factors is the marginal value so the second unit has a marginal value of eight dollars in other words the value to the person consuming that second unit they would be willing to give up eight dollars of other things for that second unit the marginal value of the fifth unit is five dollars again they're willing to give up five dollars of other things in order to consume that fifth unit the value of the seventh unit is three dollars and then the value of the tenth unit the marginal value is zero Again, the marginal value and we think of marginal we look at it as the change in total value as we increase by one more unit. So what this is saying is that tenth unit added zero value to the person consuming it. And we'll take a look at this a little bit later on when we start talking about traffic congestion or buying food at a uh, cafeteria where you pay one fee to come in or anything that has a zero price to it in the marginal value. So notice however that the marginal value is decreasing as we consume more units. And so what we want to look at is why does the price, the demand curve slope downward in price quantity space? And we can look at a couple of different questions. Number one is why does a bottle of water sell for a dollar while a diamond sells for thousands of dollars? Or why does the average teacher in the U.S. earn about 55000 while the average NBA player earns more than $5 million? And it really comes down to marginal value. So I'm going to come back to this part here, but the marginal value when we have few items, the marginal value is very high. So the marginal value of a diamond is very high because there are very few diamonds. And having one more diamond creates a whole lot of value for whoever, whoever gets that diamond. Having another bottle of water, given the millions of bottles that we have, doesn't increase value all that much, so it sells for a dollar. The same thing with an NBA player and a teacher. The skills required to be an NBA player are very rare and unique, and the marginal value is very high because so few people have that ability. The marginal value of a teacher is not that great, not because we don't value teaching, but because there are so many people who can teach that the value of an additional person who will teach is not that great relative to an NBA player. Now, when we look at our demand curve, anything within the green shaded area, people are willing to purchase someone is willing is unwilling to purchase outside of that green area so beyond the demand curve and we think about this let's say we're going to look at uh, one unit for six dollars well remember that first unit if we look to the chart to the right one unit has a marginal value of nine dollars if you're willing to sell it for six that person's willing to pay for it so anything within that green shaded area people are willing to purchase they're willing to pay six dollars for that first unit. Matter of fact, they're willing to pay up to nine dollars for that first unit. They're unwilling to purchase in the white area outside this demand curve. And what this is saying is they're not willing to pay six dollars for the eighth unit. Again, look at our schedule over here to the right with a quantity at eight. It's two dollars is the marginal value of that eighth unit. So anything within that green area, consumers are willing to purchase. 
Anything beyond the demand curve in the white area, consumers are not willing to purchase. When we look at how much people buy and the total value, we're going to look at the area within this triangle. Now remember, we looked at this, the chart on the right and we see the marginal value at each quantity. Well, the marginal value can be added, summed up, and that gives us the total value. The easiest way to do this is simply to take the area of this triangle, base times the height, uh, divided by 2, and that gives us 50. Now, if we added up all of the numbers to the right, we start with 9, 17, 24, 30, 35, 39, 42, 44, 45. Now we'd see the total value is only 45 and not 50, and that's because when we look at it graphically, we're looking at a continuous function. When we look at the right uh, chart, it's a more discrete function. We're looking at different separable units on the right, on the left uh, graph, we're looking at it as a continuous function. So we're covering all the little triangles that will result uh, to the right and underneath the demand curve at each quantity and price. When we have only five units, there are people who have much higher value than others. So somebody to the left has a higher value for these five units or one of these five units than somebody to the right. Somebody to the right may have a value of only two dollars. We only want them to have whatever this good is if the price is two dollars. We don't want them to have it if the price is higher than two dollars. We'll see how this allocation takes place but looking at a demand curve we want to look at those marginal values and those marginal values to the left of that line are much higher than the marginal values to the right. So if we had a price of five dollars, we would be selling five units and we want those people to the left or above this five dollar line, people who value these units more than five dollars or at five dollars to be able to acquire and obtain some of this good, whatever that is. So now if we look at something, say, five dollars, the price is going to be, five units will be sold at five dollars, and we can see that this is going to be the consumer surplus and the total value. So the total value here is $37.50. It's the area of the square plus the area of the triangle. Now the square is going to be total revenue. Five dollars times five units is twenty-five dollars in total revenue. That leaves twelve dollars and fifty cents for consumer surplus. Consumer surplus is how much consumers value of this item above and beyond what they paid for it. So if I paid nine dollars for the first unit, I would have paid up to nine dollars for the first unit. I only paid four, uh, five dollars. There was four dollars in surplus for that person. The second unit, somebody's willing to pay up to eight dollars for it, but they only had to pay five. So there's three dollars in surplus for that second unit. The third unit, they would have paid up to seven. They only had to pay five, so there's two unit, two dollars in surplus. And for that fourth unit, there's one dollar in surplus. And so when we look at the total value, then we want to net out the actual price that was paid, the total revenue that goes to the supplier of this good, and whatever is left over is going to be consumer surplus. And really what consumer surplus is, is the value we receive from exchange. We have to give some stuff up, and we get something that we value more in return, and that difference is consumer surplus. We can look at another example here. With two units, the price is going to be eight dollars. That's going to be the total value is going to be 18. That's the area of the rectangle and the area of the triangle. And again, the consumer, the total revenue, the consumer had to pay 16, so what's left over is the two dollars in surplus. And we can look at one last one. We'll look at something at a price of three dollars. Consumers will buy seven of them. The total value is going to be uh, six, uh, $45.50, and that includes the total revenue of $21, which leaves $24.50 remaining as surplus. This concludes the first part. We'll go on to the second part, looking at changes in demand.